Hello there, everyone. The Andrade here, and welcome back to episode... Now, I'm off in my head on episodes. I'm pretty sure this is episode 35. I think. It might be 34. I don't know, guys. I keep forgetting. Anyway, today, as you can see, we got a little mini mini crusher over there. We're talking about shrinking that guy. And we are automating a uh, mechanism with XNet. Something I have done a lot in all of my series, but it's always good to go over. It's a not the easiest process necessarily in the world, and it works fantastically. So let's get started. Welcome back, my friends, to another wonderful day here in the world of the Andrada, where today, uh, well, we have some stuff and some things we want to work on. But before we get started, I want to show you my mini crusher. <laughs> uh, thank you to uh, our friend Wandering Widget. Uh, reminded me that the occultism crusher can be shrunk using the personal shrinking device. So if you just uh, you set this to whatever height you want it to be and you punch a mob, it will shrink them. And it works on the crusher, which means that now we have a little guy here. So A, it doesn't take up as much space. And B, we can kind of sort of uh, kind of sort of fix things a little bit here because now his hitbox isn't so large which means that we have a little bit better of a of a chance of not you know not letting him get crushed or hurt or anything like that uh, so i'm going to go ahead and shove all this stuff back in here you can kind of get a preview of what we're going to be working on today uh which is automating our mechanism set up here not my first time not my first rodeo so hopefully we can fly through this and it'll just be a one episode thing and we'll be able to get done uh, but i like to show it because automating the metallurgic infusers is not always the most intuitive thing um, some people struggle with it so i want to show the process for that uh so that you know everybody can get it done it was also mentioned to me by Perfectly Gray that I could set up vector plates and I completely forgot about these. Um, if I set up vector plates here and I set them like this, what you can see what they do, but it pushes entities that land on it. Uh, so if I set this up here and I put our crusher right in the middle, now anytime that he wanders over to the side, it's going to shove him back over. Also, it works for... Um, items too so they'll get shoved over as well uh which means see look he got pushed right back over to the middle so that's great so now we don't have to worry about him moving he should be fine and now you know his his hitbox is much smaller so we it, we, we could fill this block in right there even uh, i can get some stone let's get a piece of stone here fill that in bam and now you know now we're happy we're hunky dory items are gonna fall and we're gonna do good let's get another piece of stone to kind of block that in too and ideally, I would move that filter or the magnet thing instead of just letting it float there. But I kind of just it's 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 set up how I would like it to be. I really don't want to touch it or anything like that. So, yeah, it doesn't look the greatest, but it's there. Anyway, we can go ahead and turn this back on now and it can continue doing its round robining. And, you know, all right, it's not Krulorier anymore. It's Xerxerias. Uh, but he's going to continue processing those. And now he shouldn't move, shouldn't go anywhere, shouldn't get hurt or anything like that. Uh, and should be good to go. I hope. That's my goal here. Anyway, uh, mechanism, automation. So, like I said, not my first rodeo with doing this. I've done it in pretty much every series. And I've done it pretty much the same way in every series. Uh, so, for those of you who have been following me for a while, this may be you know kind of boring for y'all but i want to like i said i want to show it because it's not necessarily the easiest thing to set up um especially automating it so that everything is able to you know keep itself stocked and, and ready to go and all that stuff uh, so that whenever you do any crafts you are ready to go you don't have to worry about you know uh any of your infusing fluids or liquids or anything like that however you want to look at them your infusing types so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set up all of our metallurgic infusers but i need to make sure they are set up in the correct spot uh, because remember we used these before so i want to make sure that they are in the order that i like them to be which is like so like this and then this one can go here this is going to be the one that will do our refined obsidian so we laid them out. We need to make sure they all get power. So we're just going to clear a couple blocks here. And we're going to set it up. Now, 
Can you automate this with only one metallurgic infuser? Yes, you can. The thing with that is, is you have to make sure that you maintain this buffer, right? Or not maintain it, but that you use all of the buffer, which can become a problem. It, be it becomes a math issue at that point. Say you want to make uh, steel, right? We want to make steel in the metallurgic infuser. If we're going to make this in here, uh, we use steel dust from mechanism or Sorry, we have to use the all the ore steel dust. Uh, so inside of this, you have to have 10 carbon for every one enriched iron. However, if you use the enriched uh, carbon, you're going to make eight. So you have to know, OK, whenever I make one of these, I need to make sure that I make actually make eight. So you have to set refined storage to make eight enriched iron every time. Enriched iron is made uh, at the same recipe, 10. So that's 10 iron or I'm sorry, 10 millibuckets. So eight. So you have to have eight iron get turned into enriched iron for every one enriched carbon. Anyway, doable, yes. But you have to make sure if you're going to do it with one metallurgic infuser, you have to make sure that you clear this out for every recipe that you're going to do. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to request something. You're going to request, you know, uh, you're going to make steel and then all of a sudden you're going to need infused alloys which requires redstone and it's just going to cause a problem because you have leftover carbon in here that you didn't burn through which means that you're not going to be able to get redstone in there yeah it's just more complicated they're really not that expensive make four of them do the thing and get yourself set up for success here we're also going to need an enrichment chamber because we're going to need to automate the oh i guess i had stuff in here uh we need to automate the production of the um the enriched the infusion type parts, the uh, 8x things that we're talking about. We're going to want to get ourselves an interface so that we can input and export items. And then finally, we need an XNet controller so that we can, you know, do the thing and manage all of this. So let's go ahead and set this up. This is on the output network. This is going to be our um, mechanism infusers. Give our controller a little bit of boost so that way it can access the flux point. And then we're going to go ahead and flux point it up and we're going to connect all these together. And I went with advanced connectors just so that way we can uh, access all sides. And the big thing with advanced connectors is we can spoof which direction that we are actually accessing this from. So, for example, this is attached to the bottom, but we can extract from the front of this machine here or the top of the machine because this is on the bottom. OK, that's why I went this route. So as with anything, uh, our first channel is going to be our power channel. I need to make sure that we get power to everything. So we're going to extract. We are going to insert. We want to make sure that the priority is set to 10 for our controller because we need to make sure that always has power because if it doesn't have power, then nothing else will because it's not going to be able to do anything. And then we're going to set everything else to get their power. And all of these were already full, so we don't have to worry about doing anything special with them. But that should be all that we need to do down here with all of these, except for the fact that I would like to name my connectors. I generally do this with uh when we do this mechanism automation because it, it just gets more confusing. So this is going to be our carbon infuser. So if we just shift right click on the connector, we can name it carbon infuser. This is going to be our redstone infuser. And make sure when you right click, you are clicking on the actual part here. OK. Oh, actually, I guess it, it did work here. It doesn't work like here. I guess this part is a uh, this is invisible. Technically, it, you can't interact with this section, apparently. Uh, so you can do it here or here. This is going to be our diamond infuser. And this is going to be our refined obsidian. Uh, infuser. And the reason that I named those is because when we come over here to our controller, it will now show refined obsidian infuser, diamond infuser, redstone and carbon. That way, you know, it just it just makes things a little easier for us ultimately because we don't have to remember, you don't have to click them and then figure out which one's which with the, you know, the wire, the red wire frame and, you know, do the whole thing. We just, you know, we're good to go. OK, so our first steps, we need to get our interface uh, set up and we need to get our enrichment stuff going. Uh, so let's go ahead and get a crafter. And I thought I had kicked off the craft of five of these, but I guess I didn't. Uh, by the way, quartz, we have a lot, 727 quartz. I need to get something automated to actually break this stuff. But at this point, you know, I'm just just chilling, waiting until I can figure that out. Oh, and before we get started, I want to go ahead and uh, I learned this in Enigmatica 6 from Integrated Dynamics. There is the labeler. Can I make this? 
Oh, I don't think I have any crystallized mineral. Oh, da, 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 da. I would love to just make this right now. Let's go find a mineral tree. The labeler is fantastic because you can, uh, I don't know if you know, but in refined storage, you can name your crafters and they will show up as that name when you get a crafting monitor. Normally you have to enchant to do so, but with the uh, labeler, you don't have to. You can just actually directly name them. But we need to find some mineral. I could buy a sapling if I needed to, if I can't find any. In just a quick search. Man, that's a lot of rain. There's a lot of a lot of chunks getting rained on right now, aren't there? I don't want. I'm not going too crazy searching for this, but there's one. Okay. And mineral logs. Did I get any saplings or anything like that? That would be no, really. Oh, everything's still up here. Oh, we still have one log. That's why. One crystallized mineral, but we can we can bonsai pot and then uh, we should have bonsai pots up here. Yeah. Nope. Don't do that. But do give me these sticks, I guess, and a mineral sapling and we can time in a bottle this. We can't time in a bottle it. Oh. There we go. Now we're timing a bottle. Now we're cooking with oil. There we go. Sweet. Check that out. Yeah, just get enough that I need. Bam. And then I'm giving my vibranium axe back. Thank you. Let's shove all this in the system. And there we go. Now I can make myself a labeler. Gotta love the time in a bottle. I think that might be the first time that I've actually like used it in this series, isn't it? Like I, I think I demonstrated it, but I haven't really used it, used it. Anyway. All right, downstairs. So here we go. So let's get our crafters set up. So the first crafter is gonna be exact same thing, right? We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do redstone infuser. Bam, and now that has the name redstone infuser. This is why I did this, cause it's great. This is going to be carbon. I did those out of order, but that's okay. We have diamond. We have, um, refined obsidian and then we just have our enrichment chamber but this is going to be our um in i guess it doesn't really make a difference does it but we're going to be making the enriched stuff in this one specifically that's mainly what it's going to be used for so this is going to be our infuser chamber let's call it that and that's going to be the first one we're going to set up so we're going to set this up here and then we can go ahead and do carbon redstone Diamond and refined obsidian. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we should have cables somewhere around here. So I just need to get some cable. I'm going to hook this up here, 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 up to the roof. And now everything's online, right? Yes. Cool. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is teach the system how to make the, you know, the actual infusions and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to reset the mechanism machine. Insert is going to be on the top. Output is going to be on the bottom. And then we just need to go over here and we need to teach the system how to make all of our enriched. So enriched. Uh, so we're going to do enriched carbon, redstone, diamond, and obsidian. I've never done gold or tin. Like I've never found a need to do those or for any other, any recipes at all. So like. Yeah, that's basically where we're at with that. Don't matter to me. Let's go ahead and do these. And then while we're here, if I don't already have it, I'm going to request a crafting card. Crafting upgrade, sorry. And I think that's all I'm going to need. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to stick these in here. And then we're going to stick this crafting upgrade in here. And we're going to say, hey, Mr. Crafter, or Mr. Interface here, I need you to make stuff for me. And apparently I can't drag from my bookmarks. I need you to make those. I need you to make those. I need you to make those. And I need you to make those. Okay. It doesn't know how to make these yet. We haven't got there because this requires refined obsidian dust, which we haven't taught the system how to do yet. But we'll get there. And I want to make sure that I keep... 16 of each in stock. 
So what it's going to do is request 16 of each of these. Right? So it's going to start making them. So it's going to do coal and then it's going to make it and it's going to do coal and then it's going to make it. However, we need to get these things out of here. So our first channel is going to be right here. We're going to extract from our um, enrichment chamber. We're going to extract from here and you're going to extract from the bottom and you are going to insert into the interface, right? So everything that gets made in here goes out and then it'll end up coming right back into this. These are, it's going to export right into here. Kind of, kind of pointless to have it do this instead of just putting it into here, but it's, you know, it's just going to go into there and then it's just going to sit in this little buffer area, right? This export buffer. So now what we need to do is we are going to need a total of one of each of these. So let's just grab these. And this will eventually speed up. We'll get upgrades on it and everything. And then eventually I'll need an enriched obsidian. But now we just need to go down the line and set up our machines, right? So we're going to do, we're going to clear config on all of these. There is a copy card for mechanism that I could make that could make this a little easier for me, but I think I'll be okay right now. Uh, we're going to take these reinforced alloys, shove them in the system in case we need them later. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, enriched carbon. We need this stuff to come over into here and it's going to go into the yellow slot right so we're going to say the yellow slot is going to be on our left side okay input is going to be on the top output's going to be on the bottom just like everything else so we're going to do same thing so that's five clicks input output one two three four five input output and one two three four five wrong reset one two three four five input and output. So now these are all set up to do what they need to do so we can actually get them going. So what we need to do, we need enriched carbon to come into here, okay? But I don't want a stack of them to be sitting in here like they currently are, right? I don't need that many. What I would like to do, maybe have 16 of them sitting here. How about that? We could have 16 sitting in all of these. So what we need to do is say, okay, Xnet, you're going to insert into that infuser, right? So we're going to do our extraction this is going to be our enriched extraction. That's what we'll call it. Enriched, uh, oh, I guess it, technically it's insertion. Enriched insertion. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find our carbon infuser and we're gonna insert into this. However, we're gonna whitelist. The only thing we wanna insert into this on this channel is our enriched carbon. And we only wanna have 16 of them in the inventory at a time, right? So then what we can do is go to our controller and then we can say extract. And you can extract. And the only thing it's going to, not sorry, not our controller, our interface. You're going to extract from here. You're going to extract an entire stack at a time. That's perfectly fine. You can go as fast as you possibly can, which is five ticks. And now it should start inserting these into the yellow slot. However, this always flubs me up. Yes, I need to forget, not forget, change my side. So this is east. That's the left side. We need to make sure that we are inserting on the left side. So we need to insert on the east and now there we go perfect 16 are in here if i take one out another one goes in take one out another one goes in which means it's going to maintain this buffer of 16 in here which will keep this always full and we need to go do the same on down the line with all the other machines so we are going to insert into the redstone infuser let's turn off insertion because we don't want carbon to go into there we're going to insert redstone in here we are going to insert diamond because that's our diamond infuser can i drag no so i need to actually make a refined obsidian before we can do the refined obsidian one but that's okay we're not going to insert into it we're just going to leave it blank uh, so we need to change this to the east side and we need to change it to 16. okay so now if i turn processing back on on this channel the redstone should come into here and the diamond should come into here. So if I go ahead and dump this back into the system, now we should have the 16 and the 16 that we need. And then the extra buffer is gonna sit in our system, okay? So then the only other thing that we really need to do, first off is we need to, this is automated for these. Now any recipes that we need will automatically be created. The only other thing we need is refined obsidian. That's the thing that we're missing. Now, if I remember correctly, refined obsidian's recipe changed, it is made Oh no, it's still obsidian dust. Okay, cool. So we just need a crusher. Uh, okay. Oh, that's create obsidian. Obsidian dust is made in an enrichment chamber. Okay. So 
it's part of this process, I guess. Could we put the obsidian dust in here or should I set up another enrichment chamber for this? Is my question. Mm, what are we going to use enrichment chamber for? Quite quite a lot if I remember correctly. Um Okay, we can make dyes. There's 113 different recipes here that we can use an enrichment chamber for. Okay, let's make another enrichment chamber. I think I have the resources to be able to do so. And we'll just make another one, and this will be for our general automation of anything enrichment chambery. Because I don't want to use this one, because this one's going to be basically dedicated to making these things. So let's set up another one over here in this area. And what did I use here? Just a regular energy pipe. Let's get another crafter. I did make a gold crafter, by the way. I think that's a quest. I made it to stick over in my uh, system over there because I'm running out of room for recipes. Plus, the gold crafter operates faster, but I think I'm going to swap out this unobtainium one for the gold crafter. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and teach the system there how to make uh, obsidian dust, which is this stuff which is obsidian to obsidian dust. There we go. So then this is going to need to uh, reset input on the top, export on the back, and then I need an importer because this is not controlled via XNet. Ideally, I probably should set this up with XNet because it's just, it's so much more convenient overall, but exporters or importers fine for now. So now I can get refined obsidian dust so let's teach the system how to make refined obsidian ingots. Your usage of this is to put it into a metallurgic infuser here with diamond dust. So when we do this, we need to make sure that we don't get the, the diamond in there, which we don't. So we're going to get this. And then this is going to get smelted, right? No, it gets in, enriched into enriched obsidian. Yes. What if I want a refined obsidian ingot? That has to go into an, uh, that's where the osmium compressor comes in. If I need to make it an ingot. Okay, cool. That's what I wasn't sure on. Uh, so you are in the metallurgic infuser and then you go into a metallurgic infuser. Enrichment chamber. Okay, 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 okay. Got it. I just had to remember where things need to go. So you're going to go there. Oh, and I already taught that. Duh. But you're going to go here. And now if we go take a look at our crafting monitor, it should have requested these. Yes, because it has it available to it in the system now and all the recipes. It's a valid recipe, so it's going to actually automatically start requesting the craft for these. So look, it's making it. Uh, except I didn't tell this to extract from there because we didn't set up this machine yet. Right, right. So our extract. Oh, I haven't set it to extract from any of our infusers. Okay, so and this is going to be our in. Oops, this is our infuser extract. See, look, I told you I'm, I've done this like, you know, ten different times, but I still forget what I'm doing. Uh, this is our infuser extract channel. Okay, so then we're going to say you're going to extract from all of these from the bottom. You're going to extract entire stacks as fast as you can. Extract entire stacks as fast as you can, and we can actually just copy this connector paste paste and honestly we actually could do it here let's save a channel not that it really makes a difference because we're not going to use this many channels but it's you know it's better save the channel and then insert into the interface so now yeah it's extracting the refined obsidian which it should or the enriched obsidian uh which should uh, will end up in here whenever this is done doing its thing the why it's you know, because the craft was already requested for the redstone, so it's going to continue. We don't need this redstone or this redstone. Because remember, I put it in the system after the fact. So, yeah. But now this should come in here. We're going to get refined obsidian or enriched obsidian, which I can then automate to go over to there. So same thing that we have here. We are going to turn off insertion for a moment. 
whitelist the obsidian, and we are going to set this to also 16. Okay? That's everything? Oh, and the east. Okay. So if I put this in here, it'll come out, it'll extract, and then I turn the processing back on here. Bam! We should have enriched obsidian in here. Bada bing, bada boom. And now we are automated. So we're going to maintain 16 in each of these. We're also going to maintain 16 here. So we have a nice good buffer of these. Remember, each one of these depends on the item and everything, but they can do eight crafts from each one of these. So that's great. And we have this automated. So now we just need to teach it what, what the heck it needs to make, uh, which like, for example, steel. So let's go pop over here. Let's go teach steel. Steel from all the ores, since we have to do it this way. So we're going to do steel ingot goes into um, it just gets smelted, right? Yeah, the dust gets smelted. But we want to make sure that we're doing the all the ores dust. And then all the ores dust is a metallurgic infuser of enriched iron and steel dust. And then enriched iron is this. So if I go over here, I put this in here and then I put these two into our carbon infuser and I say, hey, sir, I need some steel. Give me 64 steel. It's going to craft up 64 steel. I don't know if I need 64 right now. So let's do 32. I really don't need any steel right now, to be honest with you. But it's going to automatically put it in and it's going to do the thing. So now the only other thing that I really would want from this is probably going to be speed upgrades. Because as it stands now, this is pretty slow, right? We're not going the fastest. How much power are we drawing from this? Overall, 128 every so once in a while. Like, it's really not even that often. Uh, yeah, we need to we need to speed this up. So the only other thing that we need to do is teach the system how to make upgrades from mechanisms. So if we do mechanism upgrades. Uh, so first off, we're going to need speed upgrades. We're going to want energy upgrades. We're also eventually going to need gas upgrades. But we're also going to need the tier installers. This is how we can make our mechanism machines work uh, faster and better they it speeds up the whole process so a tier installer from mechanism allows us to upgrade to the basic tier which then changes it from being able to process one item to three items at a time however we're going to need to know how to make basic control circuits part of the reason that we upgraded this so this is going to go into our redstone i'm going to put in my second slot because this is carbon and then redstone makes sense uh, and advanced connectors can go away. Advanced tier is going to require infused alloys, which also goes into our redstone. It's also going to require advanced control circuits, which is this whole process. That's just a regular craft. And then we can do this and another regular craft. Elite is going to be a regular craft, which is going to require reinforced alloys, which goes into our diamond processor and elite control circuits, which is just a regular craft. Let's put our regular crafts over here, I guess. And then lastly, ultimate is going to require this stuff, which is going to require refined obsidian and reinforced alloys. OK, so that's refined obsidian and then ultimate control circuits. And we just literally tiered up to the highest tier in mechanism. And we fully have the capability to do so. Uh, so redstone was you two, diamond was you and atomic alloy was you. So if I say that I want tier installers of all three levels, so if we go basic, we can go advanced, we can go elite, and we can go ultimate. It will be able to craft all three of these. So we can take these and we can, our enrichment chamber right now is our bottleneck. So that's what I'm gonna focus on. So if I shift right click this on there, bam. We can now input three items on here. And what I wanna do is turn on auto, sport, auto sort. This used to be called auto split, it's now auto sort. But what it'll do is if it pushes in like five items at a time, it'll automatically fill up each of the slots for us. Which means I really should adjust our recipes here to do 16 at a time. That way it's it's gonna request exactly what we end up wanting to make, right? So let's do 16 and we're gonna make 16. Oops. There we go. Uh, 16. I don't know why I'm doing it the complicated way. I could just add a six. Like why am I clicking so much? We have the diamonds, like it's really not that big a deal, right? And 
I don't understand why the sixes are. I'm I'm not even pressing the right button, but it's it's doing it. So hey, I'm not going to complain about it. But now it'll request 16 of these at a time, which means that it should shove more stuff into this ultimately when the craft is done. But yeah, then our tier installers, we should start getting those. So what I want to do is I want to upgrade all of these one, two, three, four to the basic tier. And then we're going to go advanced tier. And we'll probably stop there because it does get extremely power hungry as you go through the other tiers. So we're going to we're going to limit ourselves a little bit, make sure not that we we're probably going to have issues with power, but just to be safe. We're going to auto sort, auto sort. And you can see here that it's automatically distributing the items across all of the slots so that it can, you know, go as fast as it can. So essentially, we just tripled the speed of our whole setup. When we add our advanced tier to this, it's going to add another two and then our elite tier adds another two to that so now our enriching factory i i don't know why i did it to this one but hey you know what it's going to be as absolutely fast as it possibly can go to be honest our crafters are what's slowing the whole process down because they can only insert one item at a time so that's our bottleneck now in this whole system but look we just upgraded to ultimate and we are literally highest tier that we can be for mechanism it's great i love it super simple super quick uh, and we can make anything that we need to. Yeah. Not really in mechanism. I don't want to say we can make anything because we don't have like antimatter and stuff like that. But we can make all of the items for the most part in mechanism without any issue. Really, diamonds, the expensive part. And how many diamonds do we have? 4.9 thousand. So I'm not really concerned about diamonds at this point in the game. I love the point where I love getting to that point where I don't have to worry about resources. They just are there for me. OK, the only other thing, like I said, that I would want to do in real quick before we wrap up, let's get speed upgrades taught to the system. Let's get uh, energy upgrades taught to the system and eventually gas upgrades. And each one of these has a special dust. So we're going to need to set up a uh, crusher for the dusts. So iron ingot and iron dust and then not gold sand. Nope. Gold. Nope. Come on. Give me. There we go. And yes, I do get this from my uh, occultism guy over there, but his automatically gets smelted up. This is only for stuff that we just we need like right now. OK, so there's this stuff. So we might as well just pop upstairs, grab our crusher and set this up in our processing area. Uh, we're going to want another importer. We're going to need another crafter. Importer. Crafter. Go. So that's you. Importer. Crafter. There we go. Reset. Input from the top. Output to the back give you your recipes, bam. And now I can request all the upgrades as well if I put these inside of here. So we need one, two, three, so we need five. Uh, so we need 40 of each. So we're gonna need, we'll just make a stack of each. We should have more than enough resources for that. Uh, so speed upgrade and energy upgrade. Those are the ones that we need. So we're going to let that I'm going to let that cook and process and then we'll install them next episode because it is wrapping up point. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate it. It really does help out the channel. Check out our little guy there. Man, he's doing so much good work now. I love it. Anyway, uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.